Hey guys, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in. Francisco here again with uh, Wash Wednesdays, and uh, I'm just going to share what I believe the Lord's putting on my heart. Um, let me just pray. Father, I thank you right now, Lord, uh, for every every person watching today and, and in the future, Lord. I just pray that you'd speak to them. Use me, Lord Jesus, to, to speak forth your word, God, your truth that brings freedom, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, um, for, yeah, just for what you're doing right now, Lord, and God, would you draw us continually to yourself, Father God? I just pray for uh, just a release, God, of, uh, of, of anointings and, and mantles upon your people, Lord Jesus, that we'd become everything you created us to be, Lord Jesus, that we would not miss out, Father God, that we would know you and make you known in this hour, especially in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so guys, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, <clears throat> basically receive versus release, okay? And... I believe that one of the shifts that God is doing in this hour, okay, and it's really, it, it's all really, you know, when he says I'm doing a new thing and shifting, and it's really just getting us back into alignment with him and his word and his truth and his ways, okay? So don't forget that. It's not like he, he doesn't change, okay? He, like, it's all right here. But a lot of the time we veer off course and we return back to him, we repent and that means to go back, to turn back to God, to repent, change your mind, right? And we need to do that at times, you know? And if you're following Him and you're in Him and you're in a good place, you don't need to necessarily repent or change your mind because you're in, in His mind already. But if you if you veer off course and you repent, you run back to Him, right? So so one of the things, though, that I believe is like that we for a long time, Christianity, us, us as Christians, it's like we're in this place, we're in this, we're set to this thing of in of receiving, just receive mode. I'm receiving, right? And we and it's good to receive, okay? But I feel like we live in this place of receive, and what then what do we do with it? You know, we go to church to be filled, to 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 be to hear the word of God, to be filled, meaning we're going to church empty. Um, hey, can you please uh can you give me a word? I need to hear from God. Um, hey, I'm discouraged. Please, I need to hear. Can you encourage me? You know, different things. And one the, God is releasing a shift to our par- a paradigm shift is what He's doing. Okay, and that paradigm shift is that is from receive to release. Okay, um, it's it's not it's no longer God to us. It's God through us. Where is God right now? Where is Jesus right now? You got to ask yourself that when you're praying, where do you picture him far up in heaven, somewhere far away or in you, with you or at church or where is he when you pray? Is he with you? Do you live your life like he's with you? Do you forget to talk to him after five hours and be like, oh God, I'm sorry. Like I didn't even pay attention to you. You know, it, we do this at times, you know, and we need to mature out of this. And that's what God's doing. He's shifting us. And he's given us such an amazing opportunity right now with this coronavirus, this this, this uh, quarantine, this divine reset, divine pause to really focus on what matters most, guys. And what matters most is him and knowing him intimately. Because when you know him, you make him known. When you know truth, you, you walk in freedom. You shall know the truth and truth shall set you free. John chapter 8. And so what better time right now is to just spend with him and to hear from heaven, not necessarily just uh, ask people to hear from heaven for you. We can all hear God. Okay, we can all hear God. You can hear God. If you're a Christian and you're born again, that means that you're a sheep and he's your shepherd and you hear his voice and he speaks to you. You got to know that. You got to believe that and you got to know that. If you don't believe it, you won't live like it's true, even though it is true. Okay. So you, we need to align ourselves with the truth, with the word of God, with heaven. Okay, God honors His word above His own name, is what it says. I believe in the Psalms. And so, we, like God, never intended it for us to just be blessed by God. God actually wants us. He wants to bless through us, guys. Okay, it's not just like God. How can God bless me? Guys, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about blessing my day. Okay? If if our whole world is being shaken right now, that means that your whole world and whatever you set up was Lord. 
as opposed to him. But if you're set on him and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you're building his kingdom, his church, him through you, then the shaking isn't shaking much in your life. Because it's the kingdom that remains, it's unshakable. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken and will come to the ground, come crashing down. And so let him do that work if he needs to do that work. Let him do it. Come back to him, return, restore. Hosea 6 says, uh, return to me that I may revive you on the second day and on the third day I will re raise you up. And I'll probably make a video about that more often. Just God give me a revelation about the hour that we're in, just speaking out of Hosea 6. But we need to return to him with all of our hearts, our minds, not just... Uh, with our words, but with our hearts. Rend your hearts. Turn to Him. I'm so sorry, Lord. I repent. I turn to you with all my heart, God. I'm sorry that I was missing the mark and I, was, I wasn't I was hearing and seeing clearly and I, I'm so sorry that I messed up, God. Thank you for forgiving me. And you receive His forgiveness, His grace. And He changes you and He gives you freedom again and you start walking and following Him on the narrow road. And, and what He wants us to know and, and step into, guys, is that He wants to release Himself through us, Okay? He, we carry the answer to the world's issues. We carry God. We're the house of God. We're the gate of heaven, guys. This new covenant, guys. Everything in the Bible points towards this day. Points to Jesus and then Jesus in man. God in man. Okay? Yes, we'll get glorified bodies one day. But right now, guys, the gospel sets you free from yourself. And when you're free from yourself, you're free to love people. And you're free from other people, so you're, love, you're free to love them. Unconditional love. I've talked about it before. The gospel reveals righteousness, which is right standing with God. As if you've never sinned. And you put that on, you believe it, and you walk it out. And then you begin to release heaven on earth. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is meant to be lived out, guys. He wants to release heaven through your life. He wants to release His will, His word. His purpose is through His church. Not just individually, but corporately. When we come together in unity of the Spirit, that's when we walk in true fellowship. That's when we walk in the light as He's in the light. And that's true fellowship with one another. That's a fellowship of, of the Spirit. It's not just coming together and saying we're in unity. It's true unity. You're walking in the light. No darkness whatsoever. And, and so we have to come to this place, guys. It's like... He is with you. Settle it. He's with you. He's in you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? If we're, if we're discouraged, it's because we're still living for ourselves. If we're saying, God, where are you? It's because we don't understand the gospel. If we're feeling suicidal, if we're feeling depressed, all these things, we might be distracted and our mind might be focused on the things of the flesh i'm not being um not compassionate i'm not being cruel right now like i have compassion i love you and i understand and people are going through things okay but as the church as the body of christ jesus gave his life that we might have eternal life and eternal life according to john 17 3 is that you they may know you the one true living god and jesus eternal life is to know god guys the moment you got born again, you stepped into eternal life. It's not just when you get to heaven. It's right here, right now, guys. Knowing Him. Knowing Him intimately. When you know Him intimately, you make Him known. That's our church's uh, slogan or, or vision is to know Him that He be known. Okay, that's the, that's the reality of the gospel. That's the reality of the, of the Christian walk, the Christian life. Is that God would be known through man because we're the, we're the image of God. Christ in us. The image of God, restored to His image. His image is love. God restoring him, His image upon our lives that He would be known to this lost and dying world through your life. Okay, not through just the fivefold, not just the pastor, the evangelist. No, like you, if you're a believer, through your life, God wants to use you to restore His image to this lost and dying world. You are a burning lamp, a light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Guys, I don't believe it's the end yet. I don't believe it's the end. Guys, this is a distract. This is from the pit of hell. God's using it though. He uses all things for the good of those who love him and called according to his purpose. He's definitely using this, okay? And it's awesome. And it's not awesome that people are affected, that people are perishing. People are perishing in different ways. People are perishing. They're dying from sickness, from COVID. People are perishing 
specifically believers are perishing too in our, in our thinking because our mind is set on the things of the flesh, which is, which is death. It's death. It's death. We experience death. We have feelings of death, of anxiety, depression, suicide, suicidal thoughts. And as believers, we're the head, not the tail. Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Who are we partnering with in our minds, in our thought process? Remember, repentance means change your mind. From one mind to another mind. Mind of the world to mind of God. Simple. Where My pastor says this, where you're thinking from is more important than what you're thinking. Change where you're thinking from, beloved. Change where you're thinking from. You do that by repenting. I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I thank you. And embracing truth. Embrace truth. You've been given the mind of Christ. Now study the word. Know the truth. When lies come, you don't believe them because you know truth. And you reject the lies of the enemy. He just shoots unbelief, shoots lies at us, and that's all he's got. He's got no power, no authority. He's, a, he's been cut off, and he's a withering branch. He's a cockroach under your feet. The enemy is. And so is, so is coronavirus. So is everything else from the pit of hell. You guys, as the church, God wants to make his manifold wisdom known through the church, guys. It's through you, through us, through the body of Christ. Guys, we are the hope for the world. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that Christ in us. Like, we're, the, we're in Christ. We are the hope for the world right now. Why? Because we bring Christ. Okay, I'm not pointing to myself. We bring Christ to the world. We bring Christ to this world. And He is the answer. He's the solution. He's everything. He is life. He is light. He is love. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is everything, guys. He's everything, Okay? Know Him intimately, get alone with Him, start hearing for, f- hearing Him. But know this, guys, He's shifting us from a place of m- God to man to a place of God through man. We are the house of God. We are the house of God. The reason we have to repent is because we're off course. Get back to this place of being in Him. And especially when you're not born again, you obviously have to repent because you're way off course. You're in the kingdom of darkness, okay? I'm not saying, you know, the, the verse that says, he who says he has no sin is, you know, is deceived. No, I'm saying we've all sinned and we've all turned to him. And sometimes we veer off and we got to turn again. But let's stay in that place. Stay abiding. Bide in the vine. Produce much fruit. Apart from him, you can do nothing. So live in that place, guys, that God wants to live through you. He wants to release through you, release through you, release through you. Healing, salvation, deliverance, healed, saved, delivered. He wants to encounter people through you guys. 24-7, manifesting the kingdom of heaven through your life. Okay? You're alive not for your own. You are not your own and you're not alive for you. You're alive for His great name and His image. He wants to manifest Himself through you, beloved. Through your life. That's why we need to lose our lives that we may gain it. If you, if you keep your life and hold on to your life, you will lose it. Jesus said, If anyone come after me, let him first deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. First one, deny himself. Most Christians don't do that, unfortunately. I'm not judging. It's just a fact, okay? We don't deny ourselves because we live for ourselves. We need to to die already. Die to self that he may live, okay? And dying to self, denying self simply means put off who you were never meant to be put on who you were meant to be from the very beginning, made in His image and likeness, in true holiness and righteousness. Okay? Who who you were never meant to be is living for yourself. Self-centered living. Self-centered living is demonic. Okay? It is not how you were meant to be, but sin produced it. Sin sin, uh, broke us out of the image of God and into the image of Satan, which is just straight up, selfish living okay self-centered living mindset thinking just living for yourself guys but that's not why we're alive we're alive for his image great name that he would manifest kingdom on earth his kingdom on earth through your life okay it's not it's not like god please no it's like partner with god agree with god and be at peace that's what it says in job agree with god and be at peace job 22 i believe turn there. Job 22 verse 20, 21. Agree with God and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. 
receive instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. If you remove injustice far from your tents, it's just, it's amazing. He just keeps going. And then that's when I shared last week about just uh, verses down, you will decree a matter and it shall be established for you. <clears throat> we need to partner with the Lord Jesus, guys. We need to partner with him, but we need to know him. How can you partner with him if you don't know him? How can you hear his voice if you don't spend time with him? And I'm spending time with him right now, not just alone. I spend time with him alone to hear and to be intimate. And I spend time with him when I'm with people as well. Just like with my wife. We're intimate together when no one's looking, but we're also together. We're also together spending time together in front of people as well. But there has to be that alone time for a relationship to really go deep. Um, and so guys, just, just be encouraged, guys. Like, guys, we're living in an amazing time right now, guys. I, I see everything as opportunities now, guys. I don't see problems anymore. I see opportunities. I see nothing but opportunities, honestly, guys, okay? Start partnering with God, not the enemy. There's two plans, two purposes, two kingdoms at war right now. At war, and what I mean by that, they're at war. They're trying to get your mind, your thinking. If whoever gets your mind will, will start to use your life and your words to decree and declare their plan. Because we've been given authority and dominion over the earth. As children of God. The only authority the enemy has is the authority we give him when we partner with him. Stop partnering with the enemy. Start partnering with God. Start declaring, decreeing what he's saying, what he's doing. Spend time with him so you know what he's saying and doing. Thank you, Lord. There was something else I want to share. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yes. We know the scripture, um, let me see if I can find it. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 89, 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. The foundation of God's throne is righteousness and justice. I believe righteousness and justice have to be a priority in our lives okay not just positional starts positional but righteous living and righteousness in our land in our cities and nations and justice so if there's injustices that should really tick you off that should really cause you to pray that should really cause you to go to war see this hat camo i keep getting camo things because i know it's it's wartime baby and guess what we win but there will be casualties I heard this from an amazing, uh, uh, just on fire man of God. He said, uh, a casual approach to prayer produces casualties. And it's so true. You know, there doesn't have to be casualties, but there, there is in war. And so, guys, get, get close to God. Just tuck yourself in Him. Know Him. Make Him known. And die to self so that it doesn't matter what happens. Come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. You're still okay. You're still okay in Him. Every day in Jesus is a good day, guys. Okay, despite what's going on around the world. We're not from this world. We live in a different world, different kingdom. So we're not focused on what's going on around us. Though the mountains, you know, tremble. You know, anything. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He is everything. Jesus is everything, guys. Okay? Jesus is everything. Okay? He loves you. He loves you so much. And so, guys... I believe that right now God is putting his hand on righteousness and justice because it's foundational for, his, for him to be enthroned. And you know, there's a verse that says he enthrones himself upon the praises of his people. But I believe that righteousness and justice have to be there in order for him to be enthroned because it's foundational. Okay, so therefore, the injustices of the world, of your city, of your nation, you should care about those. You should do something about it. Get alone with God. See how you can be the answer. See what you can do in your city, in your nation. God wants to raise up reformers. He wants to raise up modern day Esthers, modern day deliverers. There are so many injustices in this world, guys. And the, the top two that I can think of, guys, that just breaks my heart whenever I think about it, and the Lord's just put the burden on my heart, I just can't shake it anymore, is human trafficking 
human child trafficking, sex trafficking, and abortion. Those two, we're going to see those things die in our lifetime. I believe it. Let's go for it. Let's, let's go for it together, beloved. Let's agree. Let's go to war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? Don't fight like the world. Fight in the spirit. And then that will cause you to do things in the flesh, obviously. But start in the spirit, guys. Start in the alone, in the, in the secret place. And see what you can do about it, guys. And get. I believe God's doing amazing things today, guys. He's bringing exposure. He's bringing different things, guys. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys to just stay focused on Jesus. Don't be distracted. There's a lot of distractions, guys. There's a lot of distractions, okay? Don't be distracted. Get rid of everything. Like this, is, we're the time we're in right now, quarantine, isolation. It's so you can get alone with God and know Him. Every distraction removed. Do what you need to do to spend time with Jesus. Hear from heaven. Get out of discouragement. Get out of selfish living. Get out of depression, anxiety. Get out of those mindsets. Throw them off. They're not who you are. They're not your portion. Righteousness, peace, and joy are your portion. The fruit of the Spirit's your portion. That's who you really are. That is yours. It's yours. It's freely given, been given to you. Now lay hold of it. Lay hold of the free gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace. If He's given us His Son, how much more... Will he not, how, how will He not give us all things? Freely give us all things. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this blesses someone. If you have any questions, just reach out, private message me, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just encouraged, guys. Um, I love you. Jesus loves you. And uh, just stay in Him, God. Just know Him, all right? Bless you guys.